Good evening and welcome into the Australia Galicia Post Show live from Ribera Deras in Eresera. It's the EDP Eresera Pro. And we are looking at wrapping up a day which really, to be fair, has been a little bit frustrating for fans, spectators, for the surfers alike. Fog has been a bit of an issue here today, guys. So it's just getting vision on the lineup. We, we haven't been able to see. That's, um, that's a bummer. Yeah, it's pretty crucial, that whole vision thing in terms of um, the surfers being able to see the waves, the judges being able to score the waves, and uh, it just never cleared. We thought it might. We hung on, we hung on, we hung on, and we've had to, you know, we've had to sort of put it out, our day out of, out of its misery. So, um, yeah, frustrating. Little bits of highlights in there, which we'll go through in the post-show, but it hasn't been a, a glamour day down here in uh, Portugal, unfortunately, Pali. Well, our first storyline for the day is a bit of an upset, really, in terms of our defending champion. She had so much rhythm and mojo going with this wave. Did Alyssa Spencer, of course, it was part of her qualification. A key part of it was getting the win here last year. And anytime a surfer wins an event, you, you're thinking they have a good connection to bring it back for next year. But Binzi, she really struggled and was out of rhythm today. Yeah, it just wasn't, uh, wasn't Alyssa Spencer's day. Laura Rupp was looking pretty punchy on her forehand. Uh, maybe beforehand working a little bit in her favour, uh, just allowing her, you know, with the poor visibility to take, potentially spy oncoming sections a little better. And uh, she didn't hold back. She knows to be the champion, you've really got to beat them. And uh, unfortunately for Alyssa, that was how things went. Just couldn't quite connect the dots on any high scoring waves. And uh, she'll be bitterly disappointed. Yeah, she was ninth on the rankings on the Challenger Series, so needed a result. Just only showed just the smallest of glimpses of uh, her potential. And then this young Brazilian, just from that first moment, from that first closeout wrencher we just saw before, which was like a 7.5, never looked back. Really impressive performance from Laura. And I think, um, you know, she's, that's, she could be potentially for her career huge in terms of confidence and belief in her ability. Yeah, so the Brazilians will be delighted with what Laura was able to do here today. Also, good news for the strong, strong Brazilian contingent came in the men's round of 32. And we we're at a situation where we talk about clinching and we, we had the numbers, we'd done the math, and we knew that basically Samuel Pupa, if he got through that eight, he would be on the CT next year. Guess what? That happened. Let's remind ourselves exactly what went down. He didn't win the heat, Samuel. He got through in second place. Rafael Teixeira ripped it. But Sammy Pupo back on the CT for 2025. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to see this in every, not every heat, but most heats. There's going to be a lot on the line. Potential CT qualification. Samuel Pupo, the second surfer after Ingevea, now into the CT. And I'll tell you what, from the get-go, his brother was nervous watching, but Pupo showed no signs of nerves. He was calm, he was composed, and he still pushed, pushed it when it mattered. Got a really good 7-5 off the start. And pretty much from this wave on, he just never felt like he was going to let it go. And um, he's, he's been so impressive all year. This guy was incredible. This backhand, I think, came in around an 8.17. So really big numbers from the other Brazilian. But in terms of the big story, the big n narrative arc of today, I think that man, Samuel Pupo, getting back on 2025 on the CT, it was today's story. Benzi, what's Samuel going to do next year on the CT? Is he going to be crying at Margaret's or is he going to be happy? No, I don't think so. He's coming to play. He, he turned up today with one job in mind and he well and truly took care of it. Rafael Teixeira, he, uh, for a big, big dude, he was flying down the line, really surfed a supercharged heat, but the, the big story there, Sammy Pupo, just a short six months after he was bounced out at Margaret River, all smiles today, and we'll be seeing him when the championship tour kicks off in Hawaii to start the 2025 season. Yeah, what a cool moment as well. I mean, that is ultimately why we're here. That's what the Challenger Series exists for is getting that qualification done. Really cool to see Samuel Pupo doing that. Also today, someone else with, well, even plenty more, really, CT experience. Sally Fitz, evergreen Sally Fitz. Looks like she's enjoying her surfing more than ever. She hasn't quite got it done yet in terms of confirming, but she's still going there. She did have a tough heat, though, with Bronte. Yeah, the two Australian veterans, you know, they've been surfed against each other for probably five, five, ten years. There she is, um, you know, getting psyched up, getting ready. And she had a bit of a slow start to this heat. She was under the pump, Sally, for a little while, and then just showed this type of surfing. As you said, evergreen's probably the word. She hasn't slowed down. She keeps improving. She keeps working on her surfing. And she said in an interview that she just wants to improve her surfing. That's one of her main sort of goals, main focus. And here she was under the pump. And when it mattered, she just came out swinging. 
Yeah, she's won perhaps two heats away from being back on that tour. And I think in some regards, you know, a little reset, a little challenge of series injection has in some ways given her more motivation. Not that she needed a whole lot anyway. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing that's working against Sally is her consistency this year. She's made the quarterfinals in every event, so I think she needs a semi-final just to slightly increase her total. That's uh, how she's going with keeping four out of the six wave, six contests. Yeah, so that was cool to see Sally keep alive here and keep surfing. But the biggest moment of the day, we, we touched on it already, Samuel Pupo. I mean, essentially, that, that's, that's what we came for. Penultimate event. So, you know, we're, we're close to the end of the Challenger Series. And Samuel oh, didn't need to go to the last event in Brazil. Got it done here in Portugal once again. It's been a place that's been really good for Samuel in the past. And he's absolutely delighted. I mean, you, you had a good talk with him. He's, you know, he's... Pretty good at sort of like speaking from the heart as well, but such a smart guy. I feel like in terms of he managed to blend the sort of emotional side of surfing with the kind of thinking part. Brilliant results. Yeah, well, he won here in 2019, and he's excited to see, you know, his best friend is Yao Xianka, who has made it to the final five before. So that's kind of the next generation of Brazilian surfing. Um, you know, you throw Yago Dora in the mix. Mateus Hurd, he's knocking on the door as well. There's a real push from that sort of next generation. Well, we talk about the emotion. Let's remind ourselves exactly what went down. We'll have a look at it here. Samuel Pupo getting it done. Of course, he knew exactly the situation and the numbers that he needed. Yeah, Mateus Huddy there, Ned and score, Joanne Giroux. There's so many guys that's really, you know, every heat is make or break almost. Emrod, we lost um, Michael Rodriguez. So he, um, you know, there's a lot of guys that talk about the Brazilian push, Binzi, and here's Mateus, what an incredible surfer. Yesterday was on fire, going to the air, so much pop, so much style. But this is a guy that, you know, was in, in real strife today. And, um, you know, that shows the talent. Maxim Houston, though, on Yeah, fire. Maxim has written, but I think we touched on it yesterday a bit and sort of continue. Like, he, he dropped the eights yesterday, but, I mean, Mateus felt like he had a lot more left in the tank. And even today, you know, he got through, but really, he's just cruising, going through the gears. I reckon maybe still sort of in second gear. Mateus has got loads more to give. It's great to see Maxime back ripping as well. It's been tough for him, actually. Good comeback energy from Max. Yeah, Max said in, in his interviews that he's, he's had a year where he's gone amazing heats, one heat, a really poor performance the next one. He said it's been up and down, and he's trying to string together a, just a couple, three or four consistent heats. If he does it here, you know, he could be well on the way. Getting back onto the CT where he, he had his... He, he had his he had his first CT year after probably 10 years of, of trying. And he said he just made a few mistakes. And that's how cutthroat it is. You make a couple of mistakes in a heat and already you're off the tour. So he's fighting back hard. He's been up and down. But at this wave in form, I'd put him right in, in, you know, in the top 10 favourites for sure. Yeah. We've got that, you know, we've got that mist, that fog that's been troublesome. We've had a lot of calls and a lot of holds. And it's been like a lot of hurry up and wait sort of stuff for surfers. Binzi, how do you think contenders, people that are real close to getting that qualification, they've been crunching the numbers for a while now, right? The US Open was a little while ago. How do they just kind of keep that kind of energy just dialed back a bit and really just concentrate on performing when they do get to surf their heat? Well, I think everyone's different. Um, we saw... Uh, Matthias yesterday in his interview saying, you know, don't believe anyone. Everyone knows the scenarios, knows the maths, knows what's involved. Um, I can't remember who I interviewed, but they've been glued on a Netflix series. And if, you know, the downtime's kicking in again, then they're going straight back to the hotel and taking their mind off surfing. Other people like to go surfing. There's plenty of waves up and down the coast. They're watching the previous Australia Galicia post shows, just getting all yeah. psyched. Let's, you know, speaking of getting psyched, Samuel Pupo, let's have a look at this and just remind ourselves of this really cool moment for him. So his career really, I mean, he's still young in years, but it feels like he's done a lot. He's achieved a lot. And he's just too good for this tour, really. He's a CT surfer, I mean, in terms of figuratively, but literally he is. He's back on the 2025. Yeah, and he, he broke on the scene here in 2019. And if, if, even if you were to go back and look at that he's you know he's physically bigger he's more powerful he's way more mature he's already he, he was always a mature kid for his age and he's you know just now i think now he's in a sweet spot in terms of his age his experience and um what he's left him hanging like binzi yesterday there and what he's done to the best he's back us. on there he, he belongs on the ct I, I can't see him missing the cut this year having gone through it last year learn Learn from his mistakes and look out. He's always got a smile on his doll. Those two brothers are such a welcome addition to this tour. They, they bring so much just good vibes and good energy. And I'm, I'm just really stoked to have both the Pupos, you know, fighting for that CT bunch. We've got one. And looking at that um, that leaderboard there, um, you know, Miguel's a good chance as well. Yeah, we haven't sort of shaken up those rankings as much as we might have liked, just in terms of the number of heats we've been able to run today. But surfers who fell out the draw early, 
they don't really want to look at this, do they, Binzi? No, not at all. And there's been, uh, yeah, plenty of names. George Pitar amongst them. Uh, Ian Guvea. I don't think he was that stressed because he's already qualified. And you look lower down the order. Marco Mino, Jordan Law, Nolan Repose is out. Hiroto is out. Jacob Wilcox. Mate, that's a graveyard, that yeah. 11 to 20 there. The graveyard of ambitions. Yeah, graveyard of ambitions. It's a dead zone, man. There's so many of those guys have, uh, you know, they've bottled it. Let's let's call it that. They've turned up in Portugal and they just haven't hey, delivered. David Silva's still going. Don't Mate, sleep on him. He's it, defending champ. He's in double figures. He and Joel Vaughan, too. I reckon Joel Vaughan, he's underrated, that guy. He's got lots of those Aussie kids. They're all so good. But he's a competitive animal. He's gone up 11 rankings and he's confident. So, yeah, I, I'd watch him. I'll keep a close eye on him, too, Paul. Let's have a look at these women's rankings. We saw Sally Fitzgibbons in action today. She did defeat Bronte McCauley, and she's been really good on the Challenger Series this year. So checking out these women's rankings and seeing where we are as of right now. Of course, the cutoff point in fifth. There's a bit of a gap there between Nadia Aristabe. Of course, she's still going as well in this event. Erin Brooks out. So those five, sp five spaces is going to be so tight. Yolanda moving up into the top 10, but she's going to need to win this event to have even a chance of qualifying. Yeah, which she'll back herself to do. She's seen Bronte and Alyssa Spencer just above her, you know, so she'll be eyeing off their places at the very least. She uh, went out to surf the heat. You guys had the longest competitive heat in history. I think they paddle out at 9 o'clock. They've done 10 minutes, and we're still looking at tonight. So... Um, you know, and then you look at the next round, 11 to uh, 20 as well. A lot of those surfers, but big, the big number there is Laura Rupp, um, Binzi. Look at that, 13 places. That's how far you can jump up if you've been low down and you get a massive result here in Portugal. Sure can. And um, she's still going as well after knocking out Alyssa Spencer today. So plenty of room still for her to improve here. Well, it's been a bit of a tough one today with the fog. The surf's been there, we think. We can't really tell. The forecast is looking pretty good about tomorrow. So, like, we'll just, fingers crossed that we can actually see it. You and I went for a surf and we could barely see if there were waves. Yeah. Yeah, I was going so quick. I think that was part of the problem. But, um, yeah, look, we just want the fog to go. We just, just, can the fog just go? I've had enough of the fog, Paul. I don't, I'm sick of it. I've had enough of it. There's great waves. There's great crowds. There's great people. There's great surfers. And there's this mist that's stopping us from enjoying ourselves. So tomorrow, the sun's coming, the fog's going, and we are on. I'm telling you now, I'm really confident. I think you, you need an outlet for some of those emotions, Matt. Maybe try, have you tried journaling? Yeah, I should have journaled. And you know what I write? I don't like fog. I don't like fog. <laughs> I've, ha I've had it with the fog, but yeah, I, okay, yeah, I'll go, I can regroup. I'm all right. I'm all right now, Paul. All feel, right, we've I, got. I feel a, better now, thanks, guys. I we've think. got a 7:30 call for an eight o'clock start. We'll be checking things like swell, tide, wind, and whether we can actually see. We're pretty confident that we will be able to see something tomorrow. What I can see now is an ice cold Australia Galicia Zero. Oh, oh, oh. Cheers, guys. It's been fun anyway. We didn't run many, many heats. Worldsurfleet.com. We'll send you out with some highlights. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers. <laughs> This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.